time for domain 3.3 where we're going to talk about malware and that removal uh, I really like this I'll, I'll try not to get too long-winded with it uh, but malware removal and playing around with it and practicing with it and setting up test beds and stuff like that is the kind of things that I really enjoy uh, we're not really going to get into the test beds and how to de you know decompose a malware and stuff like that in this course it's mainly about malware removal but you know you can take that one step further with your studies if you wanted to so what we're going to do identify research quarantine disable remediate all the way down to education so we're going to take a look at each one of these steps so identify and research malware symptoms you know that's why you're taking this course that's why you're getting into it you want to help folks or i'm assuming you want to help folks obviously we want to make money put food on the table and stuff like that i understand but researching malware symptoms and everything else we've talked about in this course that's just part of your job right you have to know what to look for as a support analyst as a technician as a system admin you know, whatever hat you're going to have on so you have to think what's going on that makes you even think you have malware right missing files renamed files slow system missing missing system objects like the start button folders everything sounds a lot like the, a lot of those symptoms we talked about in the earlier domain right where i kept saying well it could be malware it could be malware and and you may have been making fun of me towards the screen anyway but this is what this is why right because malware does that kind of thing right there so we have to think why do we have it or what makes you think how can we identify that yes that's malware you may i don't have it on the slide here but antivirus might be popping off right your solution your mcafee's your norton your sophos your avg your avast your whatever may be telling you hey this is malware or hey this looks like a suspicious file or hey this has been quarantined because it matches this digital fingerprint but we need you to verify it right that kind of thing will obviously tell you hey maybe we do have some malware so we gotta find out how we're gonna find this malware so we're quarantining the infected system now right we have to make sure that we take that infected system off of the network now I'm gonna try not to get into forensics and incident handling but when you take it off the network first you don't want to unplug it from the system uh, if you're going to do that unplug it from the wall all right um, and again that that, that kind of gets into triage uh, first responder incident response and and forensics uh, more than it does a plus but if we know that it isn't an infected system and it is malware it may have the possibility of spreading to another machine and that's what we want to prevent that's the quarantine part all right so take it off the network don't necessarily shut it down all right um, because you may need to do some things especially if you're on the phone and I'm talking not as an end user even as a technician uh, if you're not trained in first responder steps for incident handling you know you need to call the appropriate uh, security personnel right and they may step you through things on the phone on you know take a picture of the screen take a screenshot uh, what's connected to it who was doing it and, and they'll step through some other steps but for quarantining, we want to make sure that that malware doesn't spread to other parts of the infrastructure. Unplug it from the wall. Now, if you do unplug it from the machine, it's not going to be a deal breaker uh, by any means. Just know which port uh, you unplugged, especially to have as multiple network interface cards. If there's just one and you unplug it from there, that's fine. Uh, if you shut down the machine, that could be some issues right so again if you're not trained on that first responder stuff unplug it from the wall keep it turned on now we can go into disabling system restore and to um, in our Windows system here so we want to do this so we don't save the system state with the malware right there on the system that kind of defeats the purpose right we're quarantining it right Keep taking it off the network we know there's a malware out uh, not an outbreak but we know there's malware on there so I don't want to save the system state right now because there's malware on there. I want to clean it off and then I'm going to save the system state. But we want to turn this off so the malware doesn't do that for us automatically, right? If I was to create a piece of malware and I'm going to assume you're going to find it eventually, you may want to try to clean it off. 
Well, if I have system protection, in this case turned on, I may take a restore point right then, and then you can go ahead and clean it off or whatever, but my malware is still on there, and if you come back to that restore point, guess what's back on your system? That's right, that malware that was saved way back in the day, all right? So once we get it cleaned out, then we can turn it back on. That's going to be a couple steps later. So right here, we're disabling the system restore, and then we're going to remediate the infected systems. This part can get a little tricky, right? Because we want to update the anti-malware software. Well, if we just unplugged it from the wall or you told me to quarantine that, how do I go out and get that update, right? So you might have to put it on a protected VLAN if you want to do something like that uh, or download the updates on a different system and try to copy those over to the infected system using, you know, a CD, DVD or a USB thumb drive that's uh, going to be sanitized and cleaned itself. Then you're going to scan and use different removal techniques. So if you scan it and the removal doesn't remove the, the malware itself, you might have to install a scanner in safe mode, right? Because the malware may have been uh, programmed and, and configured the way where it doesn't let you do that. But if you get into safe mode, um, you can do that kind of thing. The big trick is your antivirus isn't running when you're in safe mode. So you have to have that standalone scanner in order to scan and get that malware, get those infected system files or infected whatever files off of the computer. And then once you get the malware cleaned off, we wanna make sure it doesn't come back, right? That's the goal. So make sure we have our antivirus, our anti-malware updated daily, at least daily. Uh, um, you know, most of them update daily automatically, but you know, you may every six hours, every 12 hours, every whatever hours you want to do. Um, updating that, I, I would update it at a, at a minimum of daily. And that's maybe my paranoia a little bit, but um, no longer than a week. I, that way, that's way too long. Even saying it out loud almost gives me heartburn, right? So maybe a couple of days, maybe too, too long. So once we get it updated, we also want to make sure we have a scheduled scan uh, daily, uh, at least weekly, every other day, every second day, maybe third day or something like that. It's going to be based on your security policy. So small businesses, they don't always have uh, very robust, verbose uh, security policies. They might say, okay, this is our passwords and stuff, but they don't drill down in on, okay, well, you got to scan your system every day at this time, blah, 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 blah. So you may come up with that as the technician. Uh, enterprises, they're going to have a little bit more, a uh, little, little few more policies probably than a Soho or a small office. I can't say that with 100% certainty, but I'd be willing to bet that enterprise level uh, companies and organizations, uh, they're going to have more policies. In their security policy, they're going to tell you, all right, you update it daily. We're going to scan it every second, you know, every other day, every third day, every whatever. Uh, they may do it hourly. It's, it's totally dependent uh, on your environment. You know, if you're in a highly secure environment, you may scan it, you know, every other hour and update it, uh, you know, twice a day or try to update it twice a day and, and stuff like that. So. Once we get all that done, it's clean, we feel good, everybody's happy, we can enable the system restore and then go back and create restore points. All right, so from system properties over there on the system protection tab up there in the almost to the far right uh, area up there, the very bottom, there's a create button, create dot, dot, dot. We'll click on that and then we can create a restore point, you know, and <clears throat> give it a name. Usually you want to put date and timestamp in there so it knows when it was created and you can look at that real quick in the description um, but that gives you a way now let's say we created it boom right this second and then in three days we get infected well if we don't create a restore point you know in those three days and we go back to this one yeah we're losing this three days of data right but we don't have the the malware anymore right we could go back to that restore point so maybe you want to create a restore point every day. It's kind of like a, a system backup, looking at it like that, where you can go back to that point in time. Kind of nice. Uh, I, I'd recommend you use those uh, as well. And then educate the end user, right? We don't just, and, and this is going to go into 
uh, a little bit on uh, a domain four when we're going to talk about customer service and dealing uh, with individuals, but you have to educate the end user. They are not IT professionals. And I, I know I've mentioned that a couple of times, uh, but I'm trying to hit that point home, right? I, I, I'm guilty of this myself, right? If, if I'm doing a video uh, or a training or something, I have to look at it from the student's point of view, or I try to look at it from the student's point of view. As you're an entry level technician, you know, I can't be talking up here just yet. You're going to get there, I promise. But, you know, we got to keep it where you understand it or it just, it lo you lose the message. Educating end users, you have to know your audience, right? Keep in mind, like I said, they're not IT people, right? Don't start talking about the flux capacitors and CPUs and megahertz and gigahertz and all. They don't understand that kind of thing, right? So, lessons learned, educate them on security practices. You know, hey, you know, it looks like you got this by opening up uh, a malicious email. So I want to show you a couple of things that you can look for next time. So this may not happen again, right? You know, don't talk down to them and stuff like that. You can have a full-blown security awareness training. Maybe it's not a single instance, right? Maybe this happened to 30% of the employees in the company, right? That's a big deal. So what you want to do is have a security awareness training on things like I just talked about, the email. Let me show you what to click on or what's okay and what's not okay. What do we do with these instant messages when they pop up? Uh, you know, what about this spam? What about these emails? What about websites we can visit? Which ones are okay? Uh, you know, teach them little things. I wouldn't go into an A plus class. That's for you, right? That you're up here. All right, end users are down here, you're up here on this level, and they're not going to understand most of the stuff we're talking about throughout this entire course. So you have to gear it towards them, what to do, what not to do, what to look for, how to report it even. You know, if this happened three days ago and you're just now hearing about it, <clears throat> end user training needs to take place, right? Why didn't you report this? Do you Did you not know what to look for? Let me help you. And you just, oh, well, you see here, look, if you look here, uh, the antivirus did pop up. Maybe you stepped away. Maybe you were in the restroom or at lunch when that popped up. Uh, but next time you can come in and look if you have this, you know, a warning message or something, and then you can alert us faster, All right? So keep it like that. You know, maybe educate on triage or first responder techniques. That's going to be on you as far as who you're going to train. All right. Um, because when you get to triage and first responder techniques, those are the kind of things that you're going to be trained on. I, I would highly assume that um, a, as a technician support analyst, you're going to know those things. Uh, but if you're putting out a fire over here and something happens over there, you can't get there immediately. So maybe they need to know how to do simple triage things, right? Like unplug the network cable from the wall. Don't let anybody touch the computer. Take a picture of the area with your cell phone and send it to me. Um, you know, take a picture of the screen. Whose computer is this? What time is this? Of uh, what time of day is this? What do you think is going on, and why do you think that kind of thing? You know, I'm not saying let them work on the system. That's up to you and security and system admins. But they can do little things to quarantine it, right? They can take it off the network at least, and that keeps it at least at that desk until you have time or somebody has time to get there. And you can, I mean, that's an easy one, right? You, you can find it where it's plugged into the wall. Uh, you know, when I worked at the college, the professors and instructors did that all the time, right? They would move their, their desks and stuff around inside their offices, and they knew how to unplug that. It's not very hard to, it's like the... <laughs> You know, it's like the old phone jacks we used to have in houses, and I don't even think they put those in houses anymore, but, you know, they know how to unplug it. That's that's not a super technical skill there. Um, they just need to know what to do and what not to do. All right, that's going to end our Domain 3.3 where we looked at those procedures for malware removal. Lesson or Domain 3.4 is coming up next, so I'll see you over there in just a few minutes.